Well, praise the Lord, everybody. If this is your first time here at ACC, we want to say welcome. Um, it's good to have you guys. How many are excited to have church tonight? Amen. Amen. I was thinking about this verse earlier, and it's Psalms 103. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I wonder if tonight, the, it doesn't matter about how many people are here, but it matters about you, right? It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. So I wonder if we can shake off the tiredness and the weariness and I wonder if we can get into an atmosphere of praise that our soul can cry out, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Because we are come here for one purpose, and that is to lift his name in Jesus.
tacos, no more chains, no more budget, are you free? Yeah. Come on, sing it tonight. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage, I am free. Yeah. Sing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. your hands to him right now. Hallelujah. Rest. 
rescued, my sin was heavy. The chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen. Come on. Yeah. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when you call my name. in him. Hallelujah. Woo, my Lord. Hallelujah. You see, can nobody do that, Jesus? Can nobody do me like the Lord?
that right now over this house oh we thank you Lord hallelujah 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 we thank you Lord we thank you Lord
Come on, lift your hands. He's in the house right now.
hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, the presence of God is in this room. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, lift your hands, lift your voice. Glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The presence of God is here. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. You know, in that song, we requested that God would fill the room. I believe he, he answered that request. I feel his presence in this place. He has filled this room. Hallelujah. What a mighty presence of God that we feel in this place tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. As we move into the service, let's not stop entertaining the presence of God. That's what it's all about. That's why we were here. I can't stress that enough. We are here so that we can worship and glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. Praise God. I said God inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team, for leading us into the presence of the Lord. Amen. I'm excited. I'm excited to be here tonight. I can't wait to see what God has in store for the remainder of the service. Praise the Lord. If we can have the ushers come at this time, and we will take up offering just like we do on a Wednesday evening. Praise God. In the way of announcements, You can give by the QR code. Sorry, I forgot to announce that. But back there, technology is grand when it works. Praise God. Well, if you were going to give, it just disappeared real quick. If we could put that up there just for a little bit longer. Amen, amen. There it is. Let's just keep it up there for a while. But also, in the way of announcements, let's remember this Saturday at 10 o'clock, we will have men and women's Bible study, men and ladies Bible study. That sounds a little bit more more like it, doesn't it? Ladies Bible st- study and men's Bible study. Sorry, it's first week with my new lips. I'm trying to get used to them. Praise God. But we're going to go over doctrine, and we're going to learn uh, the oneness of God. We're going to learn all about doctrine and baptism in Jesus' name, being filled with the Holy Ghost, and the importance of it, what the Bible says about it. It's not something that It's just man-made. It's something that is scriptural. It's something that comes straight out of the Bible. Praise God. And we want to make sure that we're educated, that we know about it, that we understand it. And that's what it's all about. Praise the Lord. And the the goal of that is that once it's taught to you, that you'll teach it to others. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. So just remember that this Saturday. Um, uh, Remember also homecoming. That's coming up fast. It's fast approaching us. So we are going to have a cookout. We're going to have a great time. It's going to be right here at the church, uh, and it's going to be on Saturday, which is the 21st, if I've got my dates right in my mind. But it will be on the 21st. Come out. We're going to have a great time. One o'clock is going to be when it starts. So, And we want to uh, encourage you to bring some kind of a dish. If you want to know what you can bring, See uh, my lovely wife, which she has just been given that task, as we speak live, as we speak. Surprise. But just let her know um, just what you might be able to bring. We need desserts. We need some side dishes and stuff. Uh, We will provide all of the meat. And when I say that, I'm talking about brisket. I'm talking about uh, um, some shredded pork, uh, barbecued pork, chicken, Uh, hamburgers, my goodness, anything that you can think of, we're going to have on that grill. We're going to be smoking from early in the morning, smoking meat, that is, from early in the morning. 
all the way up to the time it's uh, ready to be served. We're going to have a great time. It is going to be such a marvelous time. Following Saturday, after we come in with the meat sweats the next morning, we're going to have Brother Tom Ellis. He's going to minister to us both in the a.m. and the p.m. service. And we are going to have a marvelous time in the presence of God. Amen? Praise God. We're going to have Brother Hernandez come at this time, and he is going to bring forth the word of the Lord. And I pray that the Lord just prepare our hearts to receive this. Let's get behind the man of the Lord as he brings forth the word. Amen. Can we do that? Praise God. Let's, let's clap our hands into the Lord and let's give God some praise while he comes. Hallelujah. 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 Well, praise the Lord. I feel like we're pretty prepared after that worship service. Amen. Amen. There's no doubt that God is certainly here and he's moving. And he's touching lives, and so I just want to get it out of the way. I felt this, uh, this evening as, as people were coming in, we begin to make the statement, man, where is everybody? And you might be guilty of that, but I wanted to remind us that when those who went to the upper room, the 120, I can promise you they were asking the same question, man, where is everybody? But they had something in their hearts and in their minds. God told us there was something that was going to happen, and that's why I decided to show up there. To, and that's why we're here tonight, because God is going to be here, because God has made us a promise that something was going to happen. Where there are two or three gathered together in my name, there I'll be in the midst of them. We didn't show up so that everybody could come. I showed up so that I can have received something from God. Amen. So I'm not faulting you for wondering where everybody was. I'm sure they were wondering as well. But God is moving. And I'm grateful that I'm here and I can be in his presence. And I don't ever want to miss out on what God can do. Amen. So thank you, Brother Brady, for the opportunity. I, I never take this pulpit lightly. It's always been an honor and a pleasure. Um, as Brittany and I have grown our ministry, I just, I love Mount Vernon. And since we've lived here and moved here, it's just growing more and more of a passion in my heart. And uh, we had a teacher that used to say, exposure breeds a burden. The more you're exposed to a ministry, the more you're exposed to a people, the more you're exposed to something, the more that burden grows. And so since we've been in Mount Vernon, we have experienced such a burden and a passion for this city. And we are just excited for what God's going to do. We're going to go ahead and turn to our Bibles to Daniel 6. Chapter 6, verse 8 through 10. As you go there, if you want to mark it, we're going to be in Daniel for a little bit. I give honor, of course, to all the elders, to my wife and my family. So Daniel 6, 8 through 10, it says, Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it may not be changed according to the law of Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. And verse 10, this is where we get our point. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open and in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. And you may be seated. Can we just pray one more time before we get into the word? Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you do, Lord God. We thank you for all that you're going to do, Lord Jesus. I believe that you've got a word for somebody, Lord, and I pray that you would help me to deliver this word, that you would touch my heart and my mind and my tongue, Lord God, so that I can deliver the word exactly how you want it delivered. I pray this in your mighty name, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. What I love about this scripture, what I find fascinating about this is that this guy, Daniel, was not afraid of consequences because it says simply that when Daniel knew, so they made a law saying that you can't pray, just to give you a little backstory. They had just written the law saying that if you're not going to pray to our gods and you're not going to pray to our golden calf or our golden image or whatever it was, then you can't pray. And the verse 10 says, now when Daniel knew, that the writing was signed, he went into his house. You see, he immediately went back to prayer as he'd done before. He didn't wait till it was safe. He didn't wait till he was in a room full of other believers. You see, Daniel was determined, I'm going to pray. 
I'm not going to wait for anybody to show up. I don't need any support. I don't need anybody to smack me on the back and say, come on, let's go pray together. Daniel was determined that I'm still going to pray because I've got a God who answers prayers. I know a God who's a healer, a provider. So I'm not ashamed. I'm not afraid. I'm not going to wait. I've got nothing holding me back. I've got a God that answers prayers. And so Daniel was determined. Come on, somebody. Daniel was determined to pray to his God. We have a God that is alive and well. We have a prayer answering God, a God that receives our prayer, a God that knows our needs. And so Daniel was not afraid. He didn't wait. You see, and sometimes we've got to have that mentality where you say, I can't wait for other people. I can't wait for you, brother, to come up to the altar and pray with me. I need something from God. So I've got it made up in my mind that I'm going to pray. I'm not afraid. I'm not hesitant. I'm not debating in my mind. Jesus is in the room. So I know there's a miracle worker in the room. I know there's a healer in the room. I can't afford to wait for you. Amen. Amen. And so I'm betting at this point that Daniel had a little bit of an attitude at this moment. I would imagine the reason why he immediately went back to his room was because he had something of an attitude in his mind that when he knew that was signed, something inside of him said, oh, they think they can stop my prayer. Why don't you just give me the lions now? I've already been a praying man. I didn't stop before, and I'm not going to stop now. Why don't you give me the lions now? Why don't you go ahead and just toss me in the pit? He might as well have said, because he was not afraid. He was already a praying man. You see, the power and the boldness here came from the fact that he was already a praying man of God. He didn't just wake up all of a sudden and decide to be a little bit froggy. No, Daniel's default was already to pray. And so I ask you this evening, what is your default? We know what the world wants you to default to. We know what the world would like you to fall back on. We know what the world wants you to run to. The world would love for you to default to anything other than God. But if we're going to be a church that God wants us to be, we've got to keep making sure that church is a priority, that that prayer is a priority, that prayer is the default of our lives as individuals, that prayer is the thing that we default to. He wasn't waiting till there was a call to prayer. He was amongst other children of Israel. They were all captives. They were all there. They were all together. They could have found a secret room, and they could have found a shadow to pray in. But no, Daniel was by himself, and he was determined. The Bible says that he had a routine. He prayed three times a day. He didn't miss a beat. It it didn't faze him because he had a foundation of prayer before the enemies even tried their tricks. It didn't faze him because as an individual, he had decided that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Decree or no decree, I'm going to praise him. Give me the lions. And so I wonder if there's anybody here tonight that can make up your mind to say, I'm going to default to God. I put all my faith and my trust in God, no matter the situation, no matter the circumstance, no matter the trial. Before it even happens, my default is God. Before I ever find myself in trouble, I fall back on God. I've got it made up in my mind that before I default to something else, I'm going to default to God. Of course, there is nothing wrong, but before I go and see, Doc, what do you got to tell me? Before I go and check the bank account, before I go and look and search for all the other things, my first thing I've got to do is Jesus. I'm not going to fall back on the world. I'm going to fall back on God. He didn't go and die on the cross so that way when hard times come, you can go find comfort in alcohol or marijuana or relationships. He went to the cross so that way when you find yourself in trouble, you can fall back on him. He went to the cross so that you didn't have to fall back on the world. He went to the cross so that you could fall back on him. And so there's so much about this that's powerful. This verse 10. Because we see Daniel praying. What was Daniel praying when he went to pray? His people had been captured. They were being forced to live under enemy rule at this point. The enemy was changing their names because they wanted to take away the meaning that was behind their original names, which were praise and worships to God. And they said, we got to change that. 
So under this oppression and under this sad situation, what are you praying, Daniel? You would wonder what, what makes you so bold that you're going to open your windows and pray three times a day, knowing full and well that the decree had just been signed. What makes you so bold? Are you praying for a reversal of the decree? Are you praying that God would work on the king's heart? Are you praying that for strength? Are you praying for your people? What in the world are you praying for, Daniel? And what we find in Scripture, it says that he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks. And gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Psalms 106.1 says, Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. You see, Daniel understood that my God is good, no matter the circumstance. I understand they made a law that says I can't pray, but I serve a good God who's been too good to me, and I can't miss an opportunity to tell him how good he is. I can't miss an opportunity to give him praise and worship. He has been too good to me at this point for me to just bow down and give up to my circumstance, to my situation. No, Daniel was giving God thanks because he knew that he served a victorious God. Lion's den or not, my God is greater. And as long as God's got my back, I will not be afraid. Give me the lions. And so we understand that our God is a victorious God. We can say confidently that our God is a deliverer. We can say that he's a healer and a provider. And Daniel knew this, and, and that is why he would have such a confidence and a boldness. And so I appreciate Brother Brady mentioning prayer this morning to affirm the message I had. But prayer has to become our default I'm not talking about as a church because that's too general. I'm talking about as individual people. Prayer has to become our default. I've got nothing else in my life but Jesus. He's the best thing that I've ever got. He's the best thing I'll ever get. I got to pray. It's got to be what we run to at every situation. It's got to be what we go to at every trial, every circumstance. I've got to pray. I've got to pray. I've got to pray. Give me the lions. You see, with a confidence like this, you can say, whatever the situation is, devil, I don't care. Bring it on because my God is a miracle worker. My God is able. That's why you can say confidently, give me the lions. Daniel 6, 11, it says, then these men assembled after, and they found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Even after the decree had been written, even after they had already found him praying and they went to the king to tell him, hey, that Daniel is still praying. That guy is still praying. We've got to do something about this. The king couldn't go back on the decree. He made it so that it couldn't be changed, not even him. And so they came, and what they did was they found Daniel praying still. I want it to be said of me that when the trial came, when the hard time hit, when the diagnosis came, or whatever the enemy would have thrown at me, that it would hit me while I was praying. Let the trial find you in prayer. Let the circumstance find you in prayer. Let that hard time find you in prayer. Let the depression hit you while you're praying. My default is prayer. Give me the lions. You see, the enemy thought that they were going to keep filling my mind with negativity, but not while I've been praying. The enemy thought they were going to destroy my confidence, but not while I've been praying. The enemy thought they could have my family, but not while I've been praying. Threaten me with the lions, and all you'll find is me in my default. We've got to fall back on Jesus. And so, yes, they throw Daniel into the lion's den. And we know this story. It's a familiar story. Even as children, this is one that I grew up on. I was asking my mom this morning because I had this message in my heart. And as kids, our grandma had created these little tins. You know those cookies that you can buy for a dollar and they got all a bunch of different shaped cookies, but they're all sugar cookies? Well, she always had those. It's no wonder why we have such a physique. And... She would fill them, though, with a homemade Bible study kit, these tins. And my grandma would make them. And mine had a bookmark from Daniel in the lion's den. And Obed had David and Goliath. But I always remembered that. I always remembered Daniel in the lion's den. 
And so this is a story that we're familiar with. It's a story that we, we've known for a while, many of us. And so we come to Daniel 6.22. He's been thrown in the pit, and the king comes, and he says, and Daniel responds, My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth, that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. You see, what Daniel was saying with that verse of Scripture was when he said that God has sent an angel and he shut the lion's mouth was Matthew 16, 18, I believe, when it says, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You see, David had that same confidence, except David wasn't in the New Testament. David, was, he understood that. He understood that if the gates of hell cannot prevail against me, neither can the lion's mouths come against me. Neither can the lions attack me. Neither can the lions eat me. You see, he understood that our God was able. He understood that our God's able to do it for you. See, but I've got to get to a place of prayer and boldness because I've got to understand that my God is able. Amen? Hard times will always come, and sad times will always come. The book of Ecclesiastes has a whole portion of Scripture that talks about seasons and how there's different seasons for different times, and all things will come. But I want to make sure that in all of these hard times that I am positioned like Daniel was. I want it to be said that I was a praying man or a woman of God, that I was confident when those times came against me. Amen. I want to be a praying man when those trials come. I want to be confident so I can say, give me the lions. I'm going to pray anyhow. Give me the hurt. I'm going to pray anyhow. Give me the pain. I'm going to pray anyhow. My God is able in the morning and he's able in the night. My God is able in the valley and he's able on the mountain. My God is able. Give me the lions, pit or no pit, on the top or in the bottom. My God is able. Whatever the situation, whatever the circumstance, my God is able. And so we understand, we see scripture, we know that David can smote a lion and he killed a bear. Samson smote a lion. Daniel didn't even have to kill one. God just shut its mouth. But in 1 Peter 5, 8, Jesus says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Unfortunately, I feel like Jesus should have used another animal. Because at this point in Scripture, we've seen David defeat the lion. We've seen Samson defeat the lion. We've seen Daniel defeat the lions. What am I afraid of now? Give me the lions. This is not something I'm afraid of. I know that my God is a lion slayer. Right? So what are we afraid of the lion any longer? As long as we walk in prayer, as long as our foundation is Jesus, as long as our foundation is God, we've got nothing to be afraid of. Our God happens to be a lion slayer. So just give me the lions now. Just give them to me now so we can put it to rest. We can stop playing games with the devil and say, come on, just bring your best. My God's able. And so we have confidence so we can be just like Daniel, so we can be confident in our prayer, not being hindered, not being affected, not being wavered by the times. You see, what we would have thought was David could have prayed for the change in the times. He could have prayed for his people, for the king, just like we try and pray for the president and for the country and all of this. But our prayer cannot be hindered. No matter who's in charge, no matter what laws they make, no matter what they believe, no matter what they think, our prayers cannot waver. Daniel 6, 23 says, Then was the king exceedingly glad for him. The king didn't want Daniel to go into the lion's den. He liked Daniel. But the other guys had tricked the king to make this law because they knew Daniel was a praying man. The enemy knew that he was a praying man, and so they had to find a way because they couldn't find any fault in Daniel. 
You see, and that's how we ought to be. We ought to be a people where they cannot find a fault against us on the job site, in the workplace. No matter what they try and do, they can hate your beliefs. They can hate how you are. They can hate how you dress. They can hate how you pray. But they can't find a fault in you because our God is greater and our priority is prayer. And when we connect with him, we've got, we've got to keep our faith. And so we see this part in Daniel 6.23. The king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. We've got to keep our faith. Others are waiting and they're watching to see how you're going to handle the trial. Others are waiting to see whether or not you're going to quit. Are you going to lose your temper? Are you going to cuss? Are you going to fall back on something that you shouldn't fall back on? Are you going to become bitter? Are you going to be depressed? Or are you going to stand up for yourself, dust off a little bit of the dirt and say, come on, give me the lions. My God is a lion slayer. He's able, and I, I know that he's capable of getting me through it. You see, others are waiting to see how you're going to go through the trial so that they themselves can make it through. A lot of us have children and grandchildren that are dependent on you, and they need to see how you're going to make it through a trial. They need to see that you are a praying man or woman of God, and they need to say that my mom never quit. My dad never quit. My grandma kept praying. My grandpa kept praying. Those hard times hit. They were hard, and they were rough, and they were sad. We were devastated, but they never stopped praying. They are waiting to see what you're going to do. They want to see what you're going to do. It's our job now to teach the younger generation. They want to know how do you make it through the lion's den? How do you get through these trials? How do you get through the flames when you can see them dancing like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when you're faced with such a trial? How do you do that? How are we supposed to make it in this world? It's up to us as the elders and the adults in this church to show these young people how you remain praying, how you stay faithful, how you stay connected to God, how you stay worshiping in the hard times. We had a friend in Minnesota. When I was at Bible college, he was a really good friend. His name's Brad Anderson. And he moved to Minnesota with us. So it was not with us, but he ended up in Minnesota. And he met a girl there from Minnesota. And so that's why he ended up there. Um, but they had a baby girl. And from the minute she was born, there was a massive defect in her heart. I can't tell you exactly what it was. But for the next six months, they would be at the, the Ronald McDonald house in the hospital. And he had coworkers donating all kinds of PTO. He couldn't work. They were there in the cities. That, they probably lived about three hours from the cities. But at this time, he was part of the youth committee. And so he tried his best to still help in the district, still help in Minnesota with the young people and all that. And I remember one service, it was a youth convention, and he had left the hospital for a little bit so he could come and be in the worship service. And all I remember was during the worship service, everybody was praying and worshiping. God was doing a work. And I remember Brad Anderson running, just running in the back, just saying, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. And I knew his situation, how broken and how hard that would be to have your baby grow in the hospital, not knowing how it's going to work out, not knowing for real what's going to work out, but he had a confidence in God. And I made up in my mind at that moment, if Brad Anderson can worship God in this kind of situation, then I can worship God in whatever situation faces me because I know that he's a healer. And years later, baby girl is like six years old now and she's healthy and she's strong because our God is a healer. Our God is a miracle worker. Our God is able to do it. And I wouldn't doubt for a second if that was the moment that everything changed because he had it made up in his mind that I'm going to worship God no matter the situation, no matter the circumstance, no matter what's going on. I've got it in my heart that my God is able. This is the God that we serve. He'll triumph over the enemy. You don't have to face these circumstances alone. You don't have to go through them by yourselves. You see, Daniel was by himself when he prayed, but he had a God right beside him. God, he was by himself physically in the lion's den, but he had an angel that came down to shut the lion's mouth. You are not alone in your situation, in your trial, in your circumstance. You might be in a surgery room. You might be in the hospital bed, whatever it is, but God is is with you. 
if we can all stand. Verse 25, then King Darius wrote unto all people, all nations and all languages that dwell in the earth, in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble in fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and he rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in the heaven and in the earth. Who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? You see, Daniel's fault, his default, Daniel's falling back on prayer, Daniel never refusing to quit, is what changed the king's heart and mind to the point he made a new decree. And in this new decree, he was proclaiming what we proclaim here tonight, that in every dominion of this world, they tremble in fear before God because he is the living God and he is steadfast forever. His kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and he rescue and he worketh signs and wonders in the heavens and in the earth who had delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. That same God we serve today, he's the same yesterday, today and forever. The God that saved Daniel from the lion's den is the same God that can save you from your circumstance, your situation, or your trial. Whether it's your heart or your mind, whatever it is you're going through, God can save you. He is able. Amen? Amen. If we can all make our way to the front here. You see the statement, give me the lion's is kind of an attitude. It's kind of something that needs to be stirred up in our spirit the way it was for Daniel. I know that hard times are coming. He knew the decree was written. He knew they were going to come and arrest him. He knew there was something in store. He had to have known there was a lion's den in the city. Daniel was in a position of some of power. He was, he was up a little bit. And so he had to have known there was a lion's den. He knew there was people that didn't like him. We as a, as, as a people are not ignorant of the fact that hard times are going to come. Sad times are going to come. But what is our default? That's what has to change tonight. We've got to make sure that we align ourselves with Jesus, that everything in our lives is going to line up with him. So that way when we're faced with the lion's den situation, that when we're faced with a hard time, that our default is prayer. And so tonight as we get into this altar call, I want us all to lift our hands and just begin to dedicate our lives to God, saying you are the only one, Jesus. Nobody else can love me like you, God. Nothing else can help me the way you help me, Jesus. I give it all to you, Lord God. Nothing in this world matters but you, Jesus. You are it, Lord God. I give it all to you, Jesus. Yes, Come on, somebody. Make I Jesus your default tonight. In the lowest hallelujah, valley. hallelujah, yes, Jesus. I will. Yes, Jesus. Name. Yes, Jesus. Yes, I will. Sing for joy when my heart is heavy. Oh, my Yes, day. Jesus. I'm going to serve you, God, no matter what. No matter what the situation is, Jesus, I'm going to serve you. No matter how hard it feels, God, no matter how much I might not understand it, you are on the throne, Jesus. You are the one who gives out mercy and grace, Jesus. Had it not been for your love, I don't know where I'd be, Jesus. When my heart is Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Yes, I will. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. He won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh, yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will. Oh, for all my days. Yes, I will. I 
altars to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of our Lord. That nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of our Lord. That nothing can stand against. Oh yes, I will lift you high. In the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy for my days. Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will. Oh, I choose to pray. can't stand against, I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, nothing can't stand against, oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name. When my heart is heavy, oh my days, yes I will. I count on one thing, the same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the way he did. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will. Oh, I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. That nothing can stand against. Oh, I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. That nothing can stand against. I said, I choose to praise. the name of all names, then nothing can stand against, oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy, oh my days, yes, In the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and let's give him praise. Hallelujah, let's give him worship. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, let's lift our voice. Let's lift our voice. Let's cry out to God and let's give him thanks. Let's give him praise. Hallelujah, Lord, you are my default. You are my everything. You are everything, God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
praise God. Let's sing that once more. Can we do that? And as we sing, let's remember some people that are in need of prayer. Remember Sister Strickland. She's in the hospital right now. And we're going to pray for Sister Sheets right now. That the Lord will touch her in Jesus' name. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. can't stand against. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Then nothing can't stand away. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. My heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will. Oh, yes, I will. Lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will. Bless your name. Yes, I will. Sing for joy when my heart is heavy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, what a blessed day that we've had today in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for what we felt. Thank you for pouring out your spirit on this church, on this congregation. Thank you for seeing the needs, attending to them, hearing our cry, and attending to our worship and praise that we lift up to you. I thank you, Lord, for the presence that we felt. Thank you for what you're doing in our families, in our homes, in our lives, and in this church. But thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our community. Lord, continue to pour out your blessings and pour out your anointing. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Praise God. What a glorious weekend. Oh, hallelujah. I can't wait for next weekend. And I can't wait for the weekend after that. Praise the Lord. One thing that I saw when he was reading that scripture, it says that Daniel gave thanks as he did before. He didn't change his pattern. He had trouble. He had trials. Boy, he didn't fret. He didn't panic. And he didn't pray a different way. He has such a relationship with God because it was consistent. And it was something that was already established. Let's have that consistent prayer life with God. Let that, just like Brother Hernandez said, let it be our default. It has to be. Praise God. Amen, amen. Shake hands with one another. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord.